Hello everyone and welcome to Dana webinar. My name is Maz and today we are going to present a technical webinar on modeling the influence of seasonal concrete temperature change on the displacement of the dam. Also, we are honored to have Dr. Pavel Zronet uh, from Slovenian National Building and Civil Engineering Institute to be our panelist and uh, share his great experience on this topic. Uh, this session will be recorded and after the uh, broadcasting, we will make the link available to everyone, uh, including the slides. But during the session, I'm going to mute the microphone just to avoid any background noise. You can always send your questions through the chat box or if you want to have a live chat and discussion, please let me know and at the end, I can release your microphone so you can have a direct discussion with uh, Dr. Zranat. So, uh, great honor, uh, Paul, I'm going to make you a uh, presenter and hand over the session to you. Thank you, Mas, uh, dear colleagues. Uh, my name is Pavel Zvanut. I'm head of the project team for DEMS at the Slovenian National Building and Civil Engineering Institute and I'm going to present you a project where I have modeled the influence of seasonal temperature changes on the displacement of a dam with Diana. I've divided my presentation into the following headings. Firstly, introduction. Secondly, fieldwork. Thirdly, algorithm for modeling the heat transfer. Next, effect of shading, followed by presentation of the results of thermal analysis. Then we come to the results of stress strain analysis and finally to conclusions. The evaluation of the safety of concrete dams is a complex problem. Due to the uncertainty, it is difficult to predict changes in loading, including thermal, Temperature distributions in concrete dams that cause stresses and strains were so far estimated using a rough analysis with simplified assumptions. Uncertainties also occur in meteorological parameters due to the variability of climatic conditions over time and inaccurate knowledge of heat flux at the edges of the dam. Differences between seasonal air temperatures reaching up to 60 degrees Celsius in Slovenia cause changes in the temperature field of the dam and displacements. So far, there were no precise data on changing the temperature field of the dam as there were no extensive experiments or publications. Elaborated calculation models were not verified by the results of temperature measurements and the aspect of uncertainty of the results was not taken into account. The actual research used an approach that exceeded these limitations. It allowed more reliable interpretation of the results of measurements and analysis and better knowledge of changing temperature fields due to seasonal temperature changes. Assessment of uncertainty of the results of numerical research was also determined. In a concrete dam, there are different types of the heat transfer. The time varying temperature on the downstream side of the dam is influenced by the absorption of solar radiation and by convection. While on the upstream side of the dam, there is variable influence of convection due to oscillation of the water level of the reservoir. The thermal loading causes the horizontal displacements at the top of the dam, which can be measured by pendulum. Two hypotheses were verified. The first hypothesis, using a suitable algorithm, which is based on the methods of non-linear and non-stationary heat conductions through the concrete dam, it is possible to determine changing temperature field of the concrete dam and to assess the uncertainty of the results taking into account the varying boundary conditions on the upstream side of the dam 
and the effect of shading on the downstream side of the dam. And the second hypo hypothesis, using a suitable calculation model for determining the stress-strain state of the dam, it is possible to determine the effect due to changing temperature of the concrete structure, due to changing meteorological effects near the dam to the horizontal displacements of the concrete dam in the axis on the crest of the dam and to assess the uncertainty of the results. The verification of hypothesis was carried out on the arch gravity concrete dam, so-called Moste Dam, which was built on the Sava Dolinka River in 1952. It is with a high of almost 60 meters, the highest dam in Slovenia. The downstream side of the dam is oriented southwards. The automated measuring system consisted of concrete temperatures, water temperatures, water level of the reservoir, high of spillover, meteorological effects, and inclination of the dam. The central cross section of the Moste Dam reveals the dimensions of the structure. The high of the dam is 59.8 meters. On the upstream side, the dam extends 14.5 meters into the foundation. The depth of the reservoir from the concrete spillway is 38.2 meters and about 7 meters above the spillway. It is a crest of the dam on which the road runs. The depth of water in the stilling basin is 2.7 meters. The width of the dam at the bottom is 50 meters. In the model of the dam, the blue dotted line was taken into account, so a width of 48 meters. Before establishing temperature monitoring system, preliminary calculations and analysis of the heat transfer in a concrete structure were performed. Different thicknesses, different boundary conditions, and meteorological data from the closer weather station were taken into account. The oscillation of the water level of the reservoir for the last 30 years was also analyzed. Based on the results of this analysis, a temperature monitoring system was established. Three boreholes were made in the concrete dam, two on the downstream and one on the upstream side. The concrete temperature gauges were installed in special protective tubes. The empty space was filled with a concrete-like material or with a 10 centimeter thick cylindrical core cups. The water temperature gauges were installed in a vertical steel pipe, which protected them from rushing waters and floating debris. In the cross section, the location of all three bore holes in the dam is visible. The upper bore hole on the downstream side of the dam was drilled from the top of a vertical shaft and inside it four concrete temperature gauges were installed at a depth of 10, 20, 50 and 100 centimeters. The lower bore hole was drilled from the lower inspection gallery and inside it one concrete temperature gauge was installed at a depth of 10 centimeters. An additional concrete temperature gauge was installed in a borehole on the upstream side at a distance of 30 centimeters from the surface. The four water temperature gauges in the reservoir were installed between the altitudes of 519 and 523 meters above sea level. When establishing a temperature monitoring system, execution of drilling works was required, in this case in the lower inspection gallery of the dam. The installation of the concrete temperature gauges on the downstream side of the dam, carried out with the help of climbers, and the installation of the concrete temperature gauge on the upstream side, performed using a boat at the low water level of the reservoir. Mobile automatic weather station was located very close to the dam. The concrete temperature gauges were installed in the upper and in the lower borehole on the downstream side of the dam, whereas one concrete temperature gauge was also installed on the upstream side of the dam. The water temperature gauges were installed 
in a steel pipe in the reservoir. In the center cross section of the dam, there is an automatic system of inclination measurements using a hanging pendulum. The pivot point of the pendulum is at the top of the vertical shaft. The horizontal displacement gauge is located 35.6 meters lower above a steel weight of a mass of about 400 kilos hanging on a stainless steel wire. The temperature field of the dam was determined by an algorithm for modeling the heat transfer process in a concrete dam. A second order partial differential equation that defines heat transfer in a homogeneous isotropic solid whose thermal conductivity is independent of temperature and under variable boundary conditions covers spatial and temporal temperature variations, density, specific heat, and thermal conductivity. The basic boundary conditions cover the defined surface temperature, a heat flow that is linearly dependent on the temperature difference between surface and amb ambient temperature, and defined surface heat flow. The energy flux density of solar radiation absorbed by the solid is the product of the energy flux density of the solar radiation at Earth's surface, which is the product of the solar constant and the transparency factor, the solar absorptivity of surface, and the cosine of the angle of incidence of sun's rays. The angle of incidence depends on the declination of the sun, azimuth of normal to plane, angle between plane and Earth's surface, geographical latitude, and the hour angle. In the case of the horizontal plane, the equation is simplified, and from it the solar elevation angle can be calculated. To determine the position of the sun, it is necess necessary to calculate the solar azimuth angle. Taking into account the corresponding boundary conditions, the Fourier equation can be solved numerically using the finite element method. We obtain a system of differential e equations, which includes thermal conductivity matrix, nodal temperature vector, heat capacity mat matrix, time derivative of temperature, and vector of external actions. The basis for numerical solving of the problem of non-linear and non-stationary heat conduction was the TX program in MATLAB, which was upgraded with two elaborated programs for taking into account the time varying boundary conditions on the upstream and downstream side of the dam, oscillation of the water level, spillover, insulation and shading, for determining the effect of shading, a new method was used, based on a terrestrial laser scanning of the white area of the dam and two additional programs that calculate for the selected observation point the contour of terrain, position of the sun and insulation over time. The procedure for determining the shading of the selected observation point is as follows. From the input data for the position of the sun, we first calculate declination and hour angle, then elevation angle and azimuth. From the input data for the contour of the terrain, we first calculate azimuths of all points in the cloud, then we select points for a given azimuth range, calculate elevation angles of points, and then we determine the maximum angles representing elevation angles of the terrain. If the elevation angle of the sun does not exceed the elevation angle of the terrain, the observation point is shaded, otherwise it is insulated and the determination of the heat flow is required. In the analysis of shading, the area of the Mosted Dam was scanned in July 2013 from 
seven stents. TLS measurements were performed using this scanner, which is displayed on the right bank of the dam on stent number seven. The result of measurements con contained about 50 million points, but after filtering, the number of points was reduced to around 225,000. These points were imported into the Mathematica computing environment in which contours of the terrain for 10 selected observation points located in the axis of the downstream side of the dam were calculated. The figure shows the contours of the terrain for 10 observation points, virtual paths of the sun at the summer and winter solstice. The stray points were excluded using a quantile of 0 0.998. The contours of the terrain were determined for azimuths in the range of 80 to 280 degrees. It can be seen that the elevation angles at azimuth 80 degrees are in the range from 49 to 66 degrees while at azimuth 280 degrees, the elevation angles are between 39 and 78 degrees. It is also evident that the afternoon effect of shading is greater than in the morning. The results of calculation of the contours of the terrain where the stray points were excluded using the quantile of 0.997 were very similar to the previous ones. From this, we can find out that the number of stray points from the TLS measurements is very small, and therefore very reliable results are obtained already at a small portion of excluded points. At the location of weather station, solar radiation during seven consecutive clear days was measured and calculated. It is evident that the measured and calculated times of the beginning and end of the insulation match very well, indicating that the described method of determining the effect of shading is very effective. From the results of measurements, the influence of the diffused light, which occurs before and after, the end of direct insulation can be seen. It is also evident that the effect of shading in the morning is greater than in the afternoon, since the position of the weather station is more open to the west, which is noticeable in the display of the contour of the terrain visible from the position of the weather station. Figure shows the calculated absorbed heat flux due to solar radiation at point T1, taking into account sun all year round, blue spikes, and the actual insulation measurement, measurements, red spikes. Gaps represent water spilling over the dam crest. In the summer, a fairly good matching between the daily maximums of heat fluxes is evident while in the winter there are deviations. The main cause is difficulty in measuring insulation at low positions of the sun and therefore longer radiation pass length through the atmosphere. 1D and 2D thermal analysis were performed. Within 1D analysis, three characteristic areas, A, B and C, were studied. The geometry of the 2D model of the dam was determined from the data of the project of technical monitoring and TLS measurements. The height of the model was 50.2 meters, whereas the width was 48 meters. The mesh contained 1,674 finite elements. At the edge of the dam contacting the rock, a constant temperature of 10 degrees Celsius was taken into account. 
on a constantly wetted edges Con uh, convection due to water was considered at the part with the water level oscillation convection due to air or water was taken into account on the remaining edge the insulation with shading and convection due to air or water was considered three different 15-day periods were analyzed where the effects of cloudiness below and water levels of the reservoir were taken into account. For the period of clear days without spillover, the heat flow was calculated by equation. For periods of changeable cloudiness without spillover or with occasional spillover, the heat flow was determined from the measurements. One year period was also analyzed. Based on the results of 2D thermal analysis, the temperature fields of the dam were prepared using DIANA program. Let's see the results of thermal analysis for a period of 15 consecutive clear days without spillover. The measured concrete temperatures at the downstream gauge TC1 located at a dip of 10 centimeters are between 22.5 and 37.6 degrees Celsius. Good matching of measured and calculated values is evident. The time lag at maximum temperatures is from 1 to 2 hours and at the minimum from 3 to 4 hours. The calculated and measured concrete temperatures at the downstream gauge TC2 located at a depth of 20 centimeters well match. The measured values are between 23.2 and 33.5 degrees Celsius. The time lag is slightly higher than at the previous gauge. It is between 2 and 3 hours at maximum temperatures and at minimum from 4 to 5 hours. The measured concrete temperatures at the downstream gauge TC3 located at a depth of 50 centimeters are between 23.7 and 27.5 degrees Celsius. Good matching between the measured and the calculated values is evident. The time lag is the same for maximum and minimum values and ranges from 10 to 12 hours. The calculated and measured concrete temperatures at the downstream gauge TC4 located at the depth of one meter fairly well match. The measured values are between 22.1 and 23.8 degrees Celsius. The time lag is several days. When the water level of the reservoir is above the upstream gauge TC5 located at a depth of 30 centimeters, the measured and calculated concrete temperatures perfectly match. The measured values are between 15.8 and 18.7 degrees Celsius. The time lag at maximum temperatures ranges from 5 to 6 hours and at minimum temperatures from 6 to 8 hours. The calculated and measured concrete temperatures at the lower downstream gauge TC6 located at a depth of 10 centimeters are fairly good matched. The measured values are between 19.5 and 29 degrees Celsius. The time lag at maximum temperatures is from 1 to 2 hours and at minimum temperatures from 3 to 4 hours. The calculated temperature fields of the upper part of the Mosta Dam are displayed on August 8, 2013 with a four hour interval. The greatest changes of the concrete temperature were found in the narrow area near the surface of the insulated downstream side of the dam, while the influence of convection on the upstream wet upstream side of the dam was not noticeable. It can be seen that the greatest influence on the temperature field of the upper part of the dam is found up to about 2 meters 
below the surface on the of the insulated downstream side of the dam. Let's see the results of analysis for a 15-day period of changeable cloudiness and occasional spillover, uh, represented with a black line, in the case when the spilling of water is taken into account in the calculation of the concrete temperature at the downstream gauge TC1, uh, blue line. The values correspond very well with the measured values, red line. Also, it is evident that in the case when the water spilling over the dam crest is taken into account in the calculation of the concrete temperature at the downstream gauge TC2, the calculated values are in good agreement with the measured values. Here it can be seen that the calculated concrete temperatures at the downstream gauge TC3 taking into account the spilling of water of the reservoir over the dam crest coincide well with the measured ones. Also, at the location of the downstream gauge TC4, the calculated values are quite close to the measured values when the spilling of water is considered. In the case when the water level of the reservoir is above the upstream gauge TC5, the measured and calculated concrete temperatures are perfectly matched. At the lower downstream gauge TC6, the measured and the calculated concrete temperatures are best matched when the high of spillover is at least 10 centimeters. Otherwise, the location above the gauge TC6 is not wet, since it is located somewhat outside of the axis of the downstream surface of the dam. Let's see the results of analysis for one year period of changeable cloudiness and occasional spillover. During the analyzed year, the measured concrete temperatures at the downstream gauge TC1 range from 0 0.9 to 36.2 degrees Celsius, while the calculated values are generally slightly lower. At the concrete temperatures at the downstream gauge TC2, the range of oscillation of values is somewhat smaller than at the previous location. During the year, the measured values range from 1.4 to 32.1 degrees Celsius. The calculated values are slightly lower than the measured ones. The measured concrete temperature at the downstream gauge TC3 ranges from 2.9 to 26.9 degrees Celsius. The calculated values match well with the measured values. The range of concrete temperature oscillation at the downstream gauge TC4 is lower than at the previous gauge. During the year, the measured values range from 4.9 to 23.3 degrees Celsius. In this case too, the calculated temperatures coincide well with those measured. The measured concrete temperature at the upstream gauge TC5 ranges from 3.8 to 17.6 degrees Celsius when the water level of the reservoir is above the location of the gauge a very good matching of measured and calculated values can be seen. Also, at the lower downstream gauge, TC6, where the measured values range from 1 to 25.7 degrees Celsius, a very good agreement between the measured and calculated temperatures is observed. If we compare the calculated temperature fields of the most dam during one year using time interval of two months, we find out that along the wetted upstream side of the dam, small temperature changes, changes were registered, while they were significantly larger in the area close to the surface of the insulated downstream side of the dam. The largest gradients were recorded in the upper part in the summer. Inside the dam, it is a stabilized temperature state. Figure shows measured and calculated concrete temperatures at two characteristic cross sections in summer and in winter. 
it can be seen that in cross section AA at the downstream insulated site of the dam in the summer, the temperature gradient was the largest up to a depth of 20 centimeters, whereas the temperature stabilized at a depth of about six meters. In the winter, the temperature gradient close to the surface was much smaller, but the strong effect of temperature up to a depth of two meters can be observed. The measured values were somewhat higher than the calculated values. In cross-section CC at the upstream side of the dam in the summer, when the water level was, was above the analyzed cross-section, the temperature gradient was the greatest up to a depth of 30 centimeters and was significantly lower in comparison with the winter when the water level was below the cross section. The measured, and the measured value matched the calculated values very well. For 12 selected points of the dam, the uncertainty of the results of calculations of concrete temperatures was also determined. Six normally distributed random variables were used concrete density, specific heat, thermal conductivity, convection coefficients for water and air, and solar absorptivity. For the expected values and standard deviations, 60 repetitions of calculation were performed. Box and whiskers plots show the results for all 12 points. The simulated values are most dispersed at point A1 between 28.1 and 32.6 degrees Celsius, followed by point B1, where the values are scattered between 22 and 24.7 degrees Celsius. Stress strain analysis were performed using Diana program for both 2D and 3D model of the dam. Since small deformations were predicted, a linear elastic material model was used. Unreinforced concrete was modeled as an isotropic material. It was assumed that the influence of the uplift pressure and the flexibility of the foundation are negligible. In the analysis, the influence of changes in hydrostatic pressure and seasonal thermal loading on the horizontal displacements of the upper part of the dam was determined. The geometry of a 2D model of the dam was the same as for the thermal analysis. The high of the model was therefore 50.2 meters and the width 50.8 meters, including the upper extension. A four node quadrilateral isoparametric plane strain finite element was used. It was considered that the bottom edge of the model was supported immovably. On the upstream side, the dam extends 12 meters into the rock and six meters into it on the downstream side. The high of sediments in the reservoir is 10 meters. When calculating the horizontal loading, the influence of sediments, rock and water must be taken into account. The blue line shows the measured downstream displacements, whereas the red line presents the water level of the reservoir during, during the analyzed year. The influence of water level deleveling by 6.2 meters on the measured displacements is noticeable. It can be seen that under the same temperature conditions, the measured displacement before the leveling was 0 0.17 millimeters in the downstream direction, and after the leveling, 0 0.31 millimeters in the upstream direction. Reduction of the water level by 6.2 meters resulted in a 0 0.48 millimeter displacement in the upstream direction. 
the 2D model of the dam shows the loading before and after the leveling, and also the calculated horizontal displacements in both cases. In the first case, the upper part of the dam moves in the downstream direction, while in the second case, the upper part of the dam moves upstream. The calculated horizontal displacement at the top of the vertical shaft is 0 0.49 millimeters, which is very close to the measured value. Next diagram shows the measured downstream displacements and the water level of the reservoir during the analyzed year, where the influence of seasonal concrete temperature changes on the measured displacements is discussed. It can be seen that at the same water level of the reservoir, the measured displacement in the winter was 0 0.17 millimeters in the downstream direction, whereas in the summer, it was 1.19 millimeters in the upstream direction. So the seasonal increase of the concrete temperature cost 1.36 millimeter displacement upstream. When calculating displacements due to the seasonal temperature change, the reference temperature field in winter or the reference loading was first taken into account. This covered the own, own weight of the dam, total active earth pressures on the upstream side of the dam due to, the, due to rock, sediments and water of the reservoir and total passive earth pressures on the downstream side of the dam due to the rock and the water in the stilling basin. The calculated displacements due to the reference loading indicated the displacements of the upper part of the dam in the downstream direction. Here it is evident that due to the reference loading of a dam, the development of horizontal displacements takes place in the downstream direction. Then the comparative temperature field in summer or the comparative loading in addition to the reference loading, the seasonal temperature difference was taken into account. When calculating displacements due to the comparative loading, the displacement of the upper part of the dam in the upstream direction was evident. At the displacement gauge of the pendulum, D, 12, the calculated differential horizontal displacement was 1.56 millimeters in the upstream direction, whereas the measured one was 1.36 millimeters. It can be seen that due to the seasonal thermal loading of the dam, the development of horizontal displacement happens in the upstream direction. For 12 selected points of the dam, the uncertainty of the results of calculations of horizontal displacements due to thermal loading was determined. Four normally distributed random variables were used, concrete density, el elastic modulus, Poisson's ratio, and coefficient of thermal expansion. For the expected values and stand standard deviations, 60 repetitions of calculation were performed. Box and whiskers plots show the results for all 12 points. The simulated values are most dispersed at point D6 between 3.51 millimeters and 5.92 millimeters. At point D12, where measurements were made, the values are scattered between 1.15 and 1.94 millimeters. From the figures of the normal and shear stresses of the dam due to its own weight, total earth pressures and thermal loading, we can find out that the tensile stresses are up to 1.1 megapascals and the compressive stresses up to 
eight megapascals. At the bottom of the dam, the average compressive stress is 0 0.7 megapascals, which corresponds to the own weight of the dam. The calculated compressive stresses nowhere exceed the value of the compressive strength of the concrete. And also the tensile stresses are nowhere greater than the tensile strength of the concrete, which is around three megapascals. The shear stresses amount up to two megapascals. The tensile strains are up to 2.7 times 10 to the minus four, whereas the compressive strains reach up to 7.3 times 10 to the minus five. The shear strains are the largest in the upper part of the downstream edge of the dam, where they amount up to two times 10 to the minus four. At the visual inspection of the cracks on the downstream surface of the dam, it was found that there were no visible cracks on it. The geometry of the 3D model of the dam was determined from the data of the project of technical monitoring, the TLS measurements, and the geometry of the 2D model. The high and width of the dam of the model of the dam were the same as for 2D model, and the thickness was 42.4 meters. Uh, the eight node isoparametric solid brick element was used. The model consisted of 72,000 elements. It was considered that the bottom surface of the dam was supported immovably, while on both sides of the dam, upstream or downstream displacements were only enabled. Also on the 3D model of the dam, horizontal displacements due to changes in hydrostatic pressure were analyzed. The loading on the 3D model before deleveling is shown with two different views. From the calculation of horizontal displacements can be seen that due to the loading before deleveling, the upper part of the dam moves in the downstream direction. Here it is evident that due to the loading of the dam before the leveling, the development of horizontal displacements takes place in the downstream direction. Also the loading of the 3D model after the leveling by 6.2 meters is shown with two different views. From the calculation of horizontal displacements can be seen that after the leveling, the upper part of the dam moves in the upstream direction. Due to the deleveling, the calculated upstream horizontal displacement at the top of the vertical shaft was 0 0.5 millimeters, which was very close to the measured value. It can be seen that due to the loading of the dam after the leveling, the development of horizontal displacements happens in the upstream direction. In conclusion, I will summarize that an algorithm for modeling the precise heat transfer process in a concrete dam was introduced, taking into account time varying boundary conditions on the upstream and downstream side of the dam. And using it, the temperature fields of the dam were elaborated. For precise determination of the effect of shading, a new method was applied based on TLS measurements and by making of two computer programs that determine for the selected observation point, contour of the terrain, position of the sun and insulation over time. By establishing a measuring system of the most of them, accurate data were obtained about the concrete and water temperatures at different depths and about meteorological effects in the area of the dam, as well as about the horizontal displacements of the upper part of the dam. In thermal and stress strain analysis, that is in calculating the concrete temperatures and horizontal displacements of the dam, the verification 
of computational models with the results of measurements was made and the aspect of uncertainty of the results of calculations was taken into account. With measurements and calculations at the most EDM, it was found that due to seasonal temperature changes, very small horizontal displacements occurred. The cause was high stiffness of arch gravity dam. In order to compare the adequacy of methods, the precise values of the displacements were given. On the basis of the obtained results, due to the effect of changes in hydrostatic pressure and thermal loading, the limit values of displacements can be determined. According to the findings of this project, it is assumed that in the case of less stiff, much higher and longer dams, significantly larger horizontal displacements due to the effect of thermal loading are expected. Thank you for your attention. You have any questions?